Why, hello everyone, and welcome to Cinderella Phenomenon. <laughs> okay. First of all, that was an amazing intro. I love watching that. So, hi everyone, I am Mishka. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. And as you guys can see, we're going to be starting like a new little side let's play um, called Cinderella Phenomenon. And this is just going to be something, like I said just now, on like the side of our like beginnings and always as of right now. So it won't be like I upload our life one day and then this one, the next one. It'll be like off and on. Um, every couple days, I guess. But yeah. So... Um, I actually went and recorded this video footage of this game, like, yesterday, and for some reason the file wanted to be corrupted, so I now have to do it all over again. So, yay, that is just so fun. <laughs> but before we get started, make sure to subscribe here and share this video with friends, and then they can find out about my amazing challenges we have right now. So, yeah, let's get it. I hope you enjoy. First of all, I love this game. I've I've actually played this game before, and it's a very beautiful game. Graphics are beautiful. Music is amazing. I love this game. But yeah, I haven't played it in a couple of years, so I don't really remember what happened. If you would like to check this game out, I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to go check it out. But yeah, let's just officially start. <laughs> um, Would you like to refresh... Reflesh? Oh my gosh. Here we go with me not being able to speak again. <laughs> Would you like to refresh yourself with the basics of playing a Ren Pi visual novel with our tutorial? No, thank you. Okay, so this is actually where the story begins, and this is like the prologue, sort of. So, yeah. Once upon a time in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. One was the crystal of Lucius, protected by the ruler of the fairies. The other was the crystal of Tenebarum, which was watched over by the high leader of the witches. The Lucius was sustained by love, happiness, and joy. The Tenebarum by fear, anger, and hatred. The fairies and witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. They regulated the powers of the crystals in order to maintain balance between darkness and light. For there can be no joy without sadness, no courage without fear. The kingdom was at peace for a time. Mm. Then one day, a traveling bard decided to write stories, tales of the magic and wonders of the kingdom. He named these stories fairy tales. In fairy tales, the light always emerged victorious and true love was a usual reward. The fairy tales spread further than could have been predicted. 
The humans of the kingdom began to believe that fairy tales were true and then that the magic of the witches was inherently wicked and cruel. Oh no. The wicked wicked <laughs> The witches became hated and feared. Eventually they were hunted like animals. The witch hunt. The high leader of the witches and all of her anger created the fairy tale curse. Okay. You think we are wicked, so be it. Just as you have taken our happily ever afters, we shall take yours. Oh wow. The witches used the fairy tale curse to attack humans indiscriminately, ultimately throwing the kingdom into chaos and darkness. The ruler of the fairies, the Lucius Barrier, sought to regain peace. But the witches were blinded by their hatred for humans, who were responsible for the witch genocide. A terrible war, the Great War, began. Eventually, the Ten of Barum Bearer, the High Leader of the Witches, was finally defeated. Oh, okay. The Ten of Barum was lost, peace was restored, and light once again triumphed. But darkness can never fully disappear. It waits in the shadows, patient for when its time will inevitably return. And this is... Okay, well, first of all, I love that. <laughs> I like that little ending right there. But it waits in the shadows. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so interesting. Okay. This is where we can have a name. So I, in the last, um, like the corrupted file, I named my character Marie. So that is what we will go with and enter. Prologue Ice Princess. I think that's what it says. I wasn't really sure what it said last time either. But I went, yeah. I went back through, like, some other people's playthroughs and saw it was called Ice Princess, so, yeah. Okay. My knee- Oh my goodness, I can't talk. Okay. My name is Marie Riella Britton, daughter of King Gennaro Britton III. I am the crown princess of the kingdom of Angel. At least, that was who I used to be. But that was before yesterday when I became a victim of the infamous fairy tale curse. Oh... You're pretty. Oh my gosh. I, I love how you look. Everyone has forgotten my birthright. Now I'm nothing more than a lowly peasant. I feel like I am stuck in a nightmare. But no, this is my reality now. I still have no idea what I must do to break the curse. I close my eyes and remember that day. It has started out like any other day. Have you heard another person was cursed? Okay, there's us. I'm on my way to the dining hall for breakfast when I stop and listen to the sound of hushed voices. There are two maids standing next to each other with brooms in hand. These two are slacking off again. That's terrible. What fairy tale curse was it? They say it was Pinocchio. Pinocchio, the fairy tale with a lying boy whose nose grows longer? That's awful. You know, more and more people have been getting cursed lately. You think those wicked witches are up to something again? I thought the fairy tale curse would stop after you know who was defeated, who? You two were hired to work, not talk. Girl, oh my god, okay, I actually forgot how mean this character is. Okay, I'm sorry, spoilers, I'm sorry, everyone. But this character is like, I don't know, she's, okay, you know, you'll see. Wait, we're sorry, your highness. As cannot be expected from the likes of them. <laughs> See what I'm talking about here? Another fairy tale curse? The fairy tale curse started spreading even before the Great War began. I do not have much interest in its effects even now. After all, most humans probably deserve to get cursed. The victims are weak. Angela would be better off without the dead weight. If it were up to Mother, the curse would have been banished from Angela the instant they pro fell prey to it. But mother is not here anymore. And she will not come back ever. Princess, the king and queen are waiting in the dining hall. I'm on my way. Okay. The king, Ophelia, and Rod are all present in the dining hall. Someone is conspicuously missing, missing, but I ignore their absence. Good morning, Marie. Good morning, your majesty. Good morning, Marie. <laughs> Marie, Ophelia. See, this is what I'm talking about! Oh, uh, uh, she didn't even say anything. Ophelia Windesov. 
Every day I wonder why my father, the king, married a lowly baker. She can never be a true queen, for she pales in comparison to mother. I take my seat next to the king and look up at the person sitting opposite me. And this is dear old Rod. Hello! I... Yesterday when I said, um, in my, you know, corrupted file or whatever, he was probably, like, really cute. He's, like, mute, I think. Rod Benedict Winsoff, my stepbrother, is bored and quiet as usual. He is two years my junior and is the younger of Ophelia's children. He is mute and uses a plush bunny to voice his thoughts. It was apparently given to him by a fairy. He minds his own business and is easy to deal with. But his older sister... My eyes go to the empty seat beside him. She is probably the most infuriating person I've ever had the displeasure of knowing. This is his sister, Emmeline. I'm so sorry I'm late. I was reading and forgot the time. And here she is. Good morning, dear father and mother. Good morning, Ron. And good morning to you too, Marie. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Emmeline Winnesaw, Rod's elder sister, my stepsister. She acts as if we are blood, as if she too were born a princess. As if, as if she could be crown princess, perhaps steal my place. I will never let that happen. I, I'm, I'm honestly like over this character of ours. <laughs> that sounds awful, but she's so mean. I don't like a mean character. Now that everyone is here, let us begin. Butlers glide inside with silver trays to carefully serve us breakfast. So, Emmeline, you were reading the fairy tale books that the king brought you? Oh yes, there are so many and they are all so wonderful. Thank you so much, Father. I'm happy that you like them. I love them. It's so strange that the library didn't have any of them to begin with. That's because Mother hated them. She had all the books burned. Uh, here we go. But why? They are such charming stories. Fairy tales mislead humans into believing they can have things they do not deserve. Fame, riches, love, happily ever afters. And when their wishes do not come to fruition exactly as they, they want them to, the humans blame the witches for granting them in the first place. What are you implying about the m witches, Marie? The as- Oh my gosh. The atmosphere shifts, the air in the room growing heavy. I continue to eat. Perhaps witches are not responsible for the evil in this world. Perhaps humans are the cause of their own downfall. Have you any idea what you're talking about, child? Witches have caused nothing but pain and suffering to this kingdom. Even now, they still spread the fairy tale curse to our innocent subjects. The truth is, I know very little about the time the witches had free reign over Angiel. I was very young then, and Mother forbade me to leave the palace, sometimes even my room. I know nothing of the people's supposed pain and suffering. <clears throat> Sorry. Mother kept me away from everyone, and so I cannot bring myself to care. How do you know the curse are innocent? Our people have been toiling day and night to rebuild Angel after the Great War. Our people are the kingdom's foundation, I am endlessly grateful for their determination and resolve. Every day I wonder what your mother taught you about. Leave mother out of this. <sighs> Dear please. Lord. Marie, darling, your father didn't mean to. I am not one of your children, Ophelia. I do not need your sympathy. God, please, just shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm like trying to hold back. I, I'm like trying to hold back my tongue right now. <laughs> Marie, you will show your mother respect. She is not my mother. I set down my fork and knife and stand up. I am done. Excuse me. Okay, let's go. My father and I have never gotten on, but our relationship has significantly worsened since he married the baker. My father, the king. It has been 17 years and I've never felt any love from him. He treats Emily and Rod, who only entered our life one year ago like his own children, better than he has ever treated me. This has been my life ever since Mother passed away four years ago. Mother was the only one that was there for me when no one else was. If it wasn't for the accident during the Great War, she would still be here. 
Why this sour face so early in the morning, princess? Okay, who are you again? Who are you? Oh my god! Wait, are you Fritz? Let me guess, is the king, the queen, or Princess Emmeline? Or is it all of them? I ignore his question. Fritz, what are you doing here so early? I'm running some errands for my father. Fritz Gerald Aiden Leverton, son of the highest knight of the Order of Caldera. His father, Sir El Castor, has served the royal family for many years. Sir El Castor is one of the king's most trusted advisors. Three years ago, Fritz was assigned the honor of becoming my personal knight. His presence is the only company I can tolerate nowadays. Mm. You should wait in the throne room then. <clears throat> Thank you. What? Princess? Yes? You know, I haven't seen you smile once since I met you. Why is that of any importance? Still, I do hope to see you smile one day, Princess. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I'll see you at 10. 10? Where are we going? Don't tell me you've forgotten. Forgotten what? You're going to town today, remember? I deflate as the realization dawns upon me. It has been two days since the king issued the order. Marie, I would like you to accompany Emily on one of her town outings. What? Surely you could send maids with her instead. I wouldn't have requested you to accompany her if I was going to send her with her maids. I want you to make an effort to get along with your sister. Stepsister. She is your sister and you will treat her and Rod as if they were of your blood. Yeah, stay quiet, Marie. <laughs> That's us. Oh my god. Two days from now, you are going to accompany Emmeline outside. Oh my god. Wait, what? <gasps> no! It has been four years since you left last the palace? What? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm like yelling at my microphone right now. I'm sorry, everyone. Oh my god, what? <gasps> Girls, this is too much information. Oh my god. Ever since then, you've locked yourself away. You barely leave your room. Angela was in the grip of war back then, but now the kingdom is safe and is back to its former glory. I hope! <laughs> I want you to see how beautiful Angela really is. Maria, a princess must know her kingdom. Go with Emmeline and she will show you the town that you only ever see through your windows. Is that an order? If it needs to be. Are we clear? Marie, understood. The last time I left the palace was four years ago when the king took me with him to check on the people after the Great War had ended. I shake my head, removing myself from the memory. I am safe here. Princess, are you alright? Fritz, I love you. Like, honestly, you're like, you're so nice, but not right now. <laughs> it won't be that bad. The town's are good people. I hope. I mean, how can you be so sure? Hopefully, she won't treat him like crap. Like she does with her family. Ta times have changed, people change. That is precisely the problem. Mother never changed. Mother loved me until the end. Sometimes changes for the better, princess. I think you'll see that today. If you'll excuse me, I shall see you later. Okay. Bye, Fritz. The Laura? I think. Do you think witches are capable of bringing back the dead? I wish you could talk to me. You and the others. Aw. Does she talk to, like, dolls or something? My dolls are my only friends. They are the only ones I can trust. Unlike humans, they will never betray me. They will never hurt me. They will always be there for me. The moment I saw Delora, I knew she was special. She was different. So elegant and realistic. It was almost as if she was breathing. She was a gift from the king on my 17th birthday. I only started receiving dolls from him when Mother passed away. Mother does not believe in birthday celebrations. But, but every year at midnight, a letter would appear under my door. <clears throat> it would contain instructions leading me through the palace on an adventure to a room filled with gifts, cakes, and sweets. Aww, a child's dream. i have been fascinated by the dolls, which had always held a little greeting card. A, a card with the words I love you on it signed by M. <clears throat> 
The card would tell me to keep the celebrations a special secret, but I didn't need to be told that. Mother always found a way to show me she still cared, in her own way. The secret celebrations had stopped as soon as she had disappeared. Aw. Yes? Excuse me, your highness. The king has requested your presence. This better not be another lecture. Tell my mom my way. No, girl, you going outside. I will see you later, Delora. Okay, bye. Oh. And who are you? Oh my god! Good morning, your highness. Sir Myth... 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 Oh my god, I can't talk. Mythros? Is that how you say it? Sir Mythros, the royal advisor. Oh my god, can we get you? Oh my god, I like you. Father trusts him a great deal, just like he does Sir Alcaster. Every day you look more and more like your mother. Hmm. I sometimes find Sir Mithras talking to Mother's portrait when he thinks no one is looking. He must have admired her a lot, but I cannot bring myself to think highly of him. Oh, why not? There is something about him that puts me on edge? What? Are you on your way to see the king? I shall not keep you then. Until our next meeting, dear princess. Hmm. Okay. He's hot, but also weird. <laughs> Your Majesty. Marie, are you ready? You will enjoy this, Marie. I've heard the toy shop has lovely dolls. This will be good for you. Oh, wait, are we going outside right now? You will get to know your sister better and you will able and you will be able to interact with and learn about the people of Angiel, about our subjects. I will not learn anything I do not already know. Come on, just <laughs> Make this a good experience, please. Why do you always believe that the people around you are incapable of good? Because I've seen how quickly people will, will portray and manipulate each other to get what they want. What? Mother warned me about human nature. I'm sorry, but your mother seems like a, a piece of trash. <laughs> she kept you inside. Like, she she didn't let you go outside. She's She, like, put hatred in you. Like, honestly, you do not see clearly, Marie. Yes, I agree. If you would only open your eyes, you would be able to see how good people really are. I believe I am already quite capable of seeing the true nature of people. After all, I've seen that there is no good in you. Oh my god, why would you say that? Oh my god, you look at that face! Look at his face! Marie, I... Where were you when I needed you four years ago? Where have you been ever since? Oh my god! Back then I've been flo overflowing with grief and pain. I just lost mother, my entire world. I'd hoped then that maybe then he would have shown me love and compassion. Even just a hug to let me know someone was there. It had been a childish hope I had been left alone. Are you serious? I did not see him for months, had barely even heard his voice. You can never rely on anyone but yourself. You cannot trust anyone but yourself. This is what you have taught me. Your Majesty. Ah! What? I know I, that I've hurt you. I know there is nothing I can do to atone for what I did. But please, Ophelia and her children are not a part of that. They do not deserve to be hated. In the end, they still matter more to him than I ever did. Marie, enough. I have already said I will go. Everyone is waiting outside. I shudder at the thought of leaving the palace after so many years. Marie, it will be okay. How can you be so sure? <sighs> Lord. Thank you for agreeing to accompany Emily. I would not disobey an order from the king. And this is where I'm going to leave off today's episode. <laughs> um, so... I guess next episode, we're going to be going outside for the first time in four years. First of all, I don't like our character. She sounds, like, so mean. But it also sounds like her mother put, like, all these, like, thoughts in her head and caused her to be like this. While her dad also did. But maybe not personality-wise. He just left her alone. I think her whole family is messed up, not gonna lie. <laughs> At least her biological ones. The Steph family, they seem, they seem nice so far. Like, we haven't seen much of them, obviously. But we met a whole bunch of new people. And I need to remember names because I'm not good with them. 
So yeah. <laughs> but that's all for today's video, everyone. But lastly, you're a gentleman. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye!